Okay, what's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with another mail call. This is a modern slab. In fact, this is my favorite book published in the last 20 years. It's really a special book as far as I'm concerned. And we got ourselves a slab copy of it today. And my trick that I usually use for cutting these boxes open is not working. So we are going to try again. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. I'm glad you're here. This is a really odd pack job. But looks like the book got to me safely, so kudos to the seller. So as I said, I'm Paul Kosnick. I have over 40 years experience, look at that, collecting comics and I'm still super excited about them. Wow. I love this book. What is it? Why do I care? Why should we care? This is NYX3 from February 2004. It's the first appearance of Laura Kinney or X23. The book is written by Joe Quesada and has art, including this haunting cover by Joshua Middleton or Josh Middleton. This is some of his earliest work. He worked on uh, Meridian for CrossGen, had a couple of other assignments. This is his first big assignment in the majors. It was this six part mini series NYX. So this is pretty early days for Josh. Um, but <laughs> he's he's off to an amazing start. I mean, this is just stunning and haunting art all at the same time. X-23's introduction is, to me, it's, it is the best book of the last 20 years. And I'm happy to hear others' opinions on that. But as I said, it's it's haunting. And we'll get into some of the details of that. And it's also beautiful all at the same time. And this comic book has everything going for it. We have a mega talented creative team, introduction of a great new character, stunning cover art featuring that new character, and a pretty modest print run. This book has always been a sought after key. It was a wall book literally from the day that it was released in early 2004. I remember seeing it, you know, almost immediately it was a $20, $40 book. And um, it's it's been a wall book. It's been a key ever since. For those of you who don't know this backstory, you know, it is almost 20 years old now. Not everybody's read these books. The story is a young prepubescent Laura was a victim of sex trafficking. Her powers had started to emerge, including her healing factor, which made her particularly valuable as a sex worker because she was pimped out to sadists that liked to beat the hell out of her and got off on that. And then she would quickly heal from the wounds, at least physically, but it was clear that there was an emotional and mental uh, wounds that she wasn't healing from. And her pimp could make more money on her because she would heal quickly. And there were sadists lining up who loved to beat the hell out of a young little girl and he could and she could take a beating and her pimp could turn her back around because she would just heal overnight and put her back to work. Whereas the other sex workers that he had, when he sent them off to Satis, they would have to take a week or two off to heal up from all the wounds. So it's a haunting, seriously haunting portrayal of victimization and unfortunately, like for me, it, it just hit way too close to, to reality of sex trafficking and why this story hit so close to home for me. In this particular issue, the rest of her powers start to emerge. And well, let's just say it doesn't work out so well for one particular John and eventually for her pimp. Um, she obviously has still a lot of healing to go after that, to recover from what's happened to her emotionally. 
but it is nice to see the comeuppance and to see uh, revenge or slash justice prevail. So I just, I absolutely love this book. Comicron lists the print of NYX3 as about 40,000, and I said it was modestly printed. By no means is 40,000 a rare book, but it is it is fair to call it, I think, modestly printed for such an important key and a super popular character. She's been popular, maybe not since day one, but certainly she's been gaining in popularity steadily in the last 20 years so that she's carried her own title and she's had a, a, a number of different roles on different superhero teams. And I think it's fair to say she's definitely a A-list anchor type character now in the in the Marvel Universe in the comics in the 616. And, you know, eventually we'll see her in the proper MCU. She's already been in the movie Logan, which I'll touch on in just a moment when we talk about pricing. The CGC census lists over 6,000 copies of this book. So with about 40,000 printed, 60,000 in the census, it's about 15% of the total print of this book has been slabbed. And again, that makes sense to me. This was a key, this was a wall book from day one. So about one in seven or so of the copies being slabbed makes a lot of sense to me. Regarding the fair market value, CGC 98s shot up to over $1,000 back in 2017 when we found out that X-23 was going to be featured in the movie Logan, which was an R-rated movie. I thought she was excellently portrayed. Would, would love to see her in a solo movie, but, you know, would take what we can get and loved her portrayal there. The book then, you know, fell off a little bit as interest waned after the movie, but it held steady around $1,000, plus or minus a few hundred, for the foreseeable future up until the latest bull market. The book really started to take off during the great bull market of comic books of the previous two years. At its peak, 9.8s were selling for over 2,000 regularly. The record paid was over 2,200. Now, we have a new bear market, and that's brought this book nearly back to its previous levels. So the fair market value of this book at the moment is about $1,350, but a few have recently changed hands for $1,200, which is what I paid for this little gem right here. Now, followers of the channel know I like to take a disciplined approach to comic book investing. I treat comic books as an asset class evaluate them rigorously and apply investment principles that work across any asset class. Creating parallels between investing in the stock market and in comic books helps us to evaluate potential investing opportunities in comic books. So I'm here to introduce a new concept today along those lines, and it's called technical analysis. Technical analysis is a stock trading discipline that uses price action and volume to gain insight into what price an asset may trade at in the future. Technical analysis works because the market is not 100% rational, because the market is made up of people, buyers and sellers, and people are not rational. People are emotional and they trade out of fear and greed, and that trading results in patterns in the price chart that often repeat. One of these is the tendency of an asset to price right around certain levels consistently. These levels become ingrained in the memory of traders and are difficult for markets to overcome. A floor in an asset price below which the asset almost never trades is called the support level. This is the level at which there will almost always be buyers that step in to buy that asset at that price. It's like when a sweater goes on sale, it gets down to a certain price, people show up to buy that sweater. The result is that the price will never fall further below that number because demand will always step up and rise to meet the supply at that price. Similarly, a resistance level acts as a ceiling to an asset's price, the price at which there will almost always be sellers that step in to sell the asset. The result being that the asset's price will almost never sell above that price because supply will enter the marketplace and it will rise to meet nearly any demand at that price. That is to say, people holding that asset will go, holy smokes, I can get that much for it, and they'll sell it. 
So that becomes the ceiling. Sometimes an asset trades between support and resistance levels in a range for months or even years, and then we call it range bound. But when an asset makes a move to the upside outside of the range, it breaks through the resistance level, something really interesting happens. The old resistance level will often become the new support level in the minds of the traders. For years, $1,200 was a resistance level for NYX3. It was the price above which the comic almost never sold because supply would rise up and meet any demand. The trading range was about $750 to about $1,250, but it just couldn't get through $1,200 consistently. But during the last bull market, NYX3 broke out of that price range. It established a new high of $2,200. Technical analysis tells us that the old resistance level of $1,200 is likely to be a new support level. So we've seen prices come almost down to that level now. People's opinion on this book has changed, and there will likely be buyers who step in at the $1,200 level from here. The result will be that the price is unlikely to be able to stay below $1,200 for very long. I'm betting this is the case with NYX3. So I'm a buyer of NYX3 9.8s at the $1,200 level. I think there will be opportunities to sell the book for more in the future. I think X23 has almost unlimited potential as a character. I think she's coming to the MCU in a major way. And I think NYX3 is a really great first appearance with a stunning great first cover appearance. So I'm very bullish on the long-term potential of NYX3 from here. And I'm stepping in as a buyer at the 1200 level. I hope you enjoyed this video on the use of technical analysis for trading comic books, the potential of NYX3 as an investment, and the buying opportunity that the current bear market has created in all asset classes including our favorite comic books. Until next time, happy hunting and take care of one another.